పెళ్లికి ముందు పెళ్లి తర్వాత ఒక కెరియర్లో మార్పు ఎట్లా వచ్చింది అనుకుంటున్నారు అండ్ హౌ హ్యాపీ ఆర్ హౌ సాటిస్ఫైడ్ ఆర్ యూ విత్ దిస్ చేంజ్ ఆర్ విత్ దిస్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ యూ వెదర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఫిజికలీ మెంటలీ ఇమోషనలీ రకరకాలుగా యూ గో త్రూ so how, what has changed actually what do you think has changed so not much changed for me after getting married a i'm extremely grateful to my uh, new family i my my in-laws my husband super supportive super understanding uh, very non interfering um so i feel all those things have really made me stronger okay if anything else and um i feel very confident to move ahead without having to worry that i'm leaving my family behind and going for something mm. so um that's number one but marriage did not really change me as a person as much as motherhood did okay even after being married i we got married in october 2020 and i immediately went to work in november yes you did many films like yes dance all the yes yeah. absolutely so i had my commitments from before um and i honored them i did it very nicely my husband visited me whenever he could in the middle it's just that i was trying to balance a home along with balancing my work but it wasn't as challenging okay as having a baby is mm-hmm. so i think these things are very subjective yes. every time you move forward in life you feel the earlier uh, phase was easier easier yeah right now Because. i have one child mm-hmm. maybe if i have two i feel having one is easier than having two i feel marriage was easier now it's not as easy as it used to be before getting married i felt like oh single when i was single it was so amazing because I, i was not answerable to anyone yeah so um it's a very subjective phase mm. and i guess it's all about balancing communication for me is the key i'm super communicative and transparent with my family with my husband i feel it's everything you need to communicate your intentions what are you going to do something as simple as what's my day like mm. if i don't get a chance to talk to him if we are both extremely busy i send him a message saying hey this is my schedule for the day just in case you're trying to reach me yeah. this is what i'll be doing if you if it's urgent and you really need to talk to me you can't get in touch with me please call up my assistant mm. he'll come and give the phone to me immediately please call up my makeup artist but i am available to you regardless of what's going on in my life okay. and i will be my priority is you so i will always be first available to you and then then i'll see anything else and that i've maintained from day one like that's very clear between me and my husband so has anything changed with respect to the films you choose ante okko sari intaku mundu meer icche anta time ippudu ivvaleka povachu because of the kid that you have he's just 2 years old and even 2 years back also pregnancy child birth and you know taking care of the infant so ivanni chala challenging things for a mother because i've also gone through that stage being a journalist since 20 years i know how it is it's hard in it's our industry hard. yeah so when you choose your films or when you choose the characters that you portray it is demanding so what kind of films you you were choosing in this two years of your motherhood i've never been afraid of demanding films in fact uh, when i had to take that brief hiatus for about one semester mm. one trimester i couldn't work in my pregnancy the first trimester yeah the first time second onwards i was doing a couple of things you did yeah okay. i was shooting a few Your ads baby bump was not showing it was okay but i was okay with it okay i would do a couple of ads i would do something else i was okay with that i was actually very proud of my bump so i was <laughs> happily flaunting it so the first trimester it was very difficult for me yeah. i was not used to not working i have worked for since i was 16 mm. i don't know life without work I don't know what to do with myself when I'm sitting at home. And everyone around me, especially my husband was like, "Listen, it's okay, just calm down. You will get back to it. Relax. Enjoy this phase." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm enjoying this phase, but I'm also feeling like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Mm. I'm also worried about the future. I'm also worried about oh, how will I manage?" And I guess when you're uh going through that whole nesting phase, yeah. all these thoughts come to you and a lot more. you're you're wondering about how you're going to manage you're wondering about how will it be with the baby you're scared you have apprehensions all that happens yeah. but for me when i came back post delivery and after my baby when my baby was really young yeah. i started work two months postpartum i remember there was this ad that i had to shoot very urgently yeah. and my baby was just born um uh, i was in the hospital for the first four days i went to my mom's house for those first first 40 days at my mom's place i was like oh god they need me to shoot how am i going to do it i can't i had not even healed my stitches had not healed yet i was uh, with a newborn baby 
and I was like, how am I supposed to manage? And they were like, oh, but we need, madam, we need you urgently for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So I told my parents, call them home. Let's shoot in the living room. What do I do? Yeah. I can't get out. And anyways, there's this whole thing that my parents uh, would strongly believe that for the first 40 days, you don't step out. I did not really follow, but I tried following as much as possible. Okay. But uh, I was like, okay, call them over. Let's just finish it off. And with proper protocol, I was like, okay, keep my, let's keep Neil in another room. No one goes there. Sanitize, sterilize. This is the limit. They can't, nobody can cross this. I want mm -hmm. a crew of only two, three people. I don't want too many people in the house. I don't want infections to circulate at home. Yeah. Anyways, we've gone through this entire COVID situation. Correct. So I was being hyper-cautious, hyper-controlling, but I did it. And that was one week after my baby's birth. Mm -hmm. I was back to work at home in my convenience, but I had to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we started Indian 2 immediately. Now it was a choice of whether I would take it up or I had to let go of the film. Okay. I was so emotionally invested. I was like, how am I going to let go of this film? This film for me, the journey has been four years. Yeah. It's not about now. Things happened in between. Right. Covid happened, otherwise this movie would have been over. Long ago. So what film was that? Indian 2. Okay. Two months postpartum, I shot Indian 2. Indian 2, okay. But Indian 2 was very demanding film, Extremely. Right? Physically straining. I was back on a horse two months after delivering my child. I was horse riding, which was excruciatingly painful. And I was um, doing Kalari Paya too. I barely had the strength. But then I was trying to build up and I was trying to, I had to look the part. I had to fit back in. I had to stick to my commitment. So that was not easy for me. But then I did not want to let go of that film because of the history and the background and the journey I've had with that film. And I was like, if I let go now, then this, they are going to move on with somebody else. My director was extremely understanding, Shankar sir, and I have to mention this because he tried to fit my schedule till the last moment that he could hold it, just so that he could accommodate me. And he stuck by me through it saying, don't worry, no one's going to take your place. So I really truly admire and respect him for that. And I truly appreciate the fact that he held it for so long, finished every tiny bit that he could till he could come to my, my bit. But then coming to my bit was two months. For me but we did it and it was hard but we did it and I, I look back and feel happy and I'm proud now you're sitting and talking about all of this it is emotionally draining of course I think it's postpartum blues which every woman goes through of course we don't know the reason it's all hormonal you can't really control it yeah at the same time you have to do all this and this is a physically demanding profession Today when you sit and talk, you're telling me all this. But once <laughs> when you just look back, what goes It's been a huge challenge, Prema. And uh, I think it's the toughest thing I've done in my life to balance it. I remember talking to you off camera. Because I was, I'm sure you were feeding also. You're yes, feeding your I was nursing. Yes. Yeah. And where we, we were shooting two hours from Tirupati. Mm -hmm. So I took my baby and my mom and the entire help that I could to Tirupati, stationed them there. I would go every morning two hours, one way. I would pump milk, send the milk back for my child two hours. Then the car would come back to pick me up two hours. That's six hours already the car has traveled. Then I would pack up, pump milk on my way back in the car, travel back two hours. So to and fro, to and fro, I would send milk for my baby. Mm. What can I do? And that was eight hours for the driver to keep driving all day, every day. But I had to do it. There was no other way. And use ice packs and use cold storage and make sure it reaches him safely and make sure that first, you know, take it and go. Pump in between shots in my vanity van and uh, save it and, and freeze it in the refrigerator over there. Use ice packs to quickly dispatch it and send it back home. My, my team has been very helpful, Prima. Mm. I feel you need a strong support team around you for things like this. Postpartum blues. Yeah. Of course, I went through it. It's very natural for every girl to go through it in different degrees. Mm. You go through it at some at some level or the other. For me, um, I was very anxious. Anxious? After childbirth. For what? I don't know. Mm. I still can't pinpoint the exact reason. I had my own fair share, fair, fair share of insecurities, um, anxiousness. I would get hyper. I would get angry. My husband, poor thing, was the number one victim of all of this where I would remove it on him, 
I would start crying for no rhyme or reason. Even I can't explain why I would cry. I was ecstatic with my, I would love my baby to bits, but I would be crying for no reason. Mm -hmm. There was this dichotomy and dilemma which even I couldn't fathom and understand like why am I feeling all these things. I guess it's an integral part for a woman to adjust to the new environment. You're also a mother for the first time. Yeah. You're also going through these experiences for the first time like your baby is. Uh, the separation anxiety during Tirupati was more for me than it was for my baby. Mm. He was only 2-3 months old. He wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. But for me, I would go every day crying to work. Every morning I would cry. And I would call up my husband and bawl on the phone. Husband or Nisha. So Gautam and Nisha I think dealt with it the most with me. And I would be like why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I should be at home with him. Maybe I'm not being a good mom. Maybe I'm... Uh, the guilt. Yeah. Massive guilt. Yeah. But I took therapy to deal with it. I took therapy. A short course of supervised antidepressants. Whatever was safe and I could do I did. Of course, all this guided mm. with the guidance of a proper established medical psychiatrist slash psychologist. Had to do it. And you bounced back. Yeah, we all do.